Hello, my name is David Webb, and this is a video for Dweebovision. I am a Scrabble Grandmaster, and in this video I am going to play Scrabble while providing in-game commentary on my moves. Hopefully this will help to improve your game, and be fun to watch. The game has just started, so let's join the action. My opponent's gone first. I have an awful rack, I have two U's and a V. Certainly don't have a bingo. And I'm looking to sort this rack out as soon as possible. Now, ordinarily, I'd be loath to play off my S without having a bingo, but I note that I do have Viduous through the O of Anion. Let me see what this scores. And the advantage of this is, is that it gets rid of both U's and the V. 22 points. I think if I mess around with anything else and I'm retaining U's and V's, then I, I don't think I can achieve a better score and rack balance combination. And that's much better. I have Gelada's, which plays in row I. I would have, and I have Celadang in column 9 through the N of Anion. It's possible that both of those bingos could be blocked. Now, does Anion take an S? I think it does, because I can't think of an alternative plural. So I do have Gelada's in column 13 as well. Anion does have a front hook. It has an F for Fanion. Just wondering if there are any other front hooks. Well, looking at the tiles on my rack, none of those is a front hook. Do I have any other eight-letter bingos? Apart from Celadang. Salvaged. Yes, I have salvaged in row D through the V of Viduous. How much does that score? 82 points, that's not bad. Now what about Gelada's in column 13? 76. Well, Jalala's is a much more defensive move. It doesn't uh, provide any floaters apart from the G, and it doesn't open up any triple word squares. But I'll need to consider the board after my opponent has played. So I have a bingo through the V or Viduous and the N, or the first N of Anion. Just looking at the other floaters to see if I have any other eight letter bingos. Can't see anything through the S of Viduous. And then there's the D, which duplicates a tile on my rack. Can't see anything through that. My opponent's taking a while to make his move. He may be close to a bingo. My opponent's disappeared. Let's see if he returns. What I will do is pause. My opponent has returned after about 30 seconds to one minute. So it's good to have him back. Oh, great. Gelada slots in nicely underneath Jibers. I'll 
I'll see what this scores, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be better than salvaged. 86 points, that's great. And I draw three O's. I do not have a bingo. So my priority is to try and sort this rack out, and in particular sort out the vowel consonant imbalance. If I don't sort it out, it's going to drag in, drag on into future racks in reducing my score, mainly by uh, reducing my bingo potential. I certainly would like to play off two of the O's. Now, Anupia is good through an A. There is no... Well, there's the A in column 8, but Anupia down from B8 is just not going to score very much. 10 points. It would leave an O, so it would certainly sort this rack out. But I'm looking for the right uh, rack resolution and score, and if this and Anupia fails badly on the score front. Okay, all those words are good. 50 points for my opponent, that's a massive score. So I'm only 13 points ahead at this stage. All the, all, all the more reason for uh, sorting this rack out as quickly as I can. Now I could play pooing in column 3, but that's not going to score very much either. And it's going to open up the triple word square at h1. So can I do better? It would be nice to play through the V of Viduous because then I could get the four points from the V double to give my score an uplift. So I could play Avion, but that would leave P double O, and that's not a good leave. It's only 16 points. So I can't see anything through the V. The V doesn't take a tile either side, so I can't play parallel to it. My opponent's play hasn't opened up anything really. All of which is leading me to reassess Anupia. Score is awful. It sorts the rack out and as we saw earlier Sorting the rack out with Viduous led immediately to a bingo, so let's see what effect this has. Ooh, awful. Well, it is what it is. I have got Wax at B7. Not a huge score, but it gets rid of three of my tiles, and the rack lever VILO is balanced with only one high scoring tile. But if that's taken, what else do I have? Well, I've got the I for a play of G somewhere, but if I play G, I'm keeping F, V, and W. That isn't good. Ooh, gosh. Okay, so Anupia is not good. So that was a bad play. And therefore saved having to deal with that dreadful Q rack. Now, I think Napu is good. Does that play anywhere? No, it doesn't. But what does play is Poinado. using precisely the letters that I used for Anupia and probably scoring a little bit more. 18 points. Yeah, that's the play I should have spotted uh, last go, I think. And that's a much nicer rack to deal with. It looks close to a bingo. 
but I don't have an E and an S, an E or an S, and I've got a duplicate R, so I may not actually have a bingo, and I'm 34 points behind. And there are very few floaters on this board. I don't think Poinado takes an S at the end. So, I'm just looking to see if I have anything through the V of Viduous. Well, I have Vaunt, but that's not good. It doesn't split up the duplicate R. And I'm looking to see if I can play above Poinado to take advantage of the X. So Nox is good. And Ape and Ope are good. So I could play Ran or Rant. But that does keep the U and it would be nice to play off the U as well. Can I do that? It's good to play off the U because it doesn't feature in many bingos and I am behind. Outran. Great. It's not a huge score. But it plays off the U, sorts out the duplicate R, scores 27 points, which is not bad for a rack full of one-point tiles. And I'm playing off six tiles, which is good, given that half the bag has been played and neither blank has been played yet. I don't have a blank, I have milkier. Does that play? No, it doesn't. Outran does take a K at the end, outrank. So I do need to consider column 8 to see if I have anything down from the triple word square at A8, ending KI. Can't see anything. Eyed in column 7 does take an M at the end to make I dem. But then bad does not take an I after it, so I can't play milkier there. Okay, no spot provided by my opponent for milkier. I've also got the like prefix, and with that I have R I M. Okay. Can't see anything with that. I'm looking at the V of Viduous. In combination with my M or my K, I might have a half decent score through that. And I also need to consider plays around Outran. For example, plays beginning at D1 with the K or the M. Well, it doesn't put the K or the M at D1, but I do have Rhyme. 24 points, that's not great. Kellim and Melek are both good. Can't see anywhere for those to play. Well, now there's also another good spot at H1 across underneath Wex. So is Milka good? I think it should be. But I'm not 100% sure of this, but it's going to score well. Well, it's either going to score 62 points or it's going to score zero if it comes off. Agent nouns are always tricky. Milker. Somebody who milks or a cow which provides milk. Sounds very plausible. Now, before I play it, I need to consider if there's a word I'm 100% sure of which plays in that spot. 
and I can't see one, so I'm going to try this. I hope it stays on. And if it does, I don't have a bad rack. Anxious moments. Great. Milka stays on. My opponent bingos. He plays off both blanks for 79. He is 53 points ahead. He's also opened up a bingo lane in column 14. Do I have a bingo? Is Cotier good? I think it is Cotier. Does it have an anagram? Gosh, Cotia. I think it's good. I think Cotia takes an S. I'm in a similar position with Milka in being fairly confident, but not totally confident. And I should be. This is pretty high probability set of tiles. 74 points. Okay, anxious moments again. See if this stays on the board. If it does, I have a decent rack. And I have a 21 point lead. And what's good is that I've opened up two hotspots at A15 and H15. And I've got the F and the H to score. So whichever one my opponent takes, I can take the other. I can play FEH at F15 down. Great. My opponent's challenged Cotia. It's good. I get five extra points. Effectively, my opponent actually loses five points. So I'm now 26 points ahead. Well, that's a relief. It would have been um, remiss and disappointing if Cotia had come off. That would have been two phonies in one game. But it stays on now. Do I have anything through the C? I don't only have to consider plays in row A. I can also consider plays in column 15 coming down because CH is good. Okay. Well, my opponent takes the bottom spot. Flench is good. Flench. Okay. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 45 points. That's good. Now what about coming down? Ah, nothing good. I'd much rather play off the F. Half tone would have been good through a T. There are very few floaters on this board. Flench. The rack leave is not good, but 45 points is a great score. And I draw an S, and I also have a B for score, but other than that, it's not a great rack. I have five vowels. But looking at the score, I'm 36 points ahead. My opponent's on turn, so that's not a very big lead. I'm looking at F2. I can place my B there. And I don't have anything which goes after the U apart from the S. OBA is good. Now there are nine tiles in the bag, of which five are vowels. Wow, big score for my opponent. He now takes a seven point lead. Four tiles in the bag. Pretty bingo, eh? So, what can I do? Four tiles in the bag, including an, a, w, a W and an F. I don't think I can leave A, H alone. Although I note that both the W and the F can play at F2, so my opponent could well have a choice of good scores, and I am behind. Now, nothing goes in front of the Z, so in terms of using a8 I could play ab 
26 points. Not a huge score, and I'm leaving myself with four vowels. Mind you, there are only three vowels unseen, and if I draw some of them, it means my opponent has got a massively consonant-heavy rack. So this is what I'm thinking of. Ab across here. 26 points. Let me just put that back. I'm not in time trouble. There are other ways of obstructing A8. I could play underneath Slotty. I've got both an A and an O which can, can go underneath the Z. Still an S unseen, which is annoying. So a play of Boa across here, 20 points. Plays off one more vowel, leaves me with a more balanced rack leave. But I'm sacrificing six points. And my opponent could have a play beginning at A8. Coming down, putting an S on the end of Boa, or even an R. Yeah, that's the R is the killer, there's two R's. So that's not good. What about Ober across here? 17 points. Well, I'm now dropping a lot of points. Okay, am I missing something obvious on this board? Gosh, this is tricky. This is tricky. I've got six minutes left. I think my preference is for ab. I am retaining the A and the E for going underneath the Z next go, and there's only one A unseen, so I'm a big favourite for using that spot. Okay. Right, I do, well, I draw the, the remaining S. I'm not sure how useful that is. I have the F for score which plays at F2, and ALF is good. Okay, so I could play SOFA at C5 across. That would score reasonably well. Thirty-two points for my opponent. He has now got a thirteen-point lead. He's emptied the bag. He has got EGGED on his rack. Can he play EGGED anywhere? No, he can't. He's got five tiles, so there's the floating C and H of Ostrich. He hasn't got to play through that. Okay, so I don't think he can go out in one. My F could go in front of Arrow to make Pharaoh. But I can't see a good play which utilises that. So I had Sofa, and that would leave EAS. That's a pretty good rack leave. Yeah, there'll be several spots where I can play that. So I'm 13 points behind. So I'll have S double E. Sofa, 37 points, that's actually quite a few more than I was expecting. So take away 13 from that, leaves 24. I'll have a 24-point lead, and I'll be able to go out. Okay, unless I've overlooked an outplay for my opponent, I think this Sofa should make me the favourite. Let's see what happens. Now, where can I play C? C and Yetis. 
13 points, that's not a huge score. Double ES is not good, so the only three letter play on my rack is C. I can play it at A1. Okay, badged for 33, so my opponent has now got nine point lead. He's got three tiles on his rack. I need to score three points. Well, I can do that. So I'll, I've got just under four minutes. Goodness knows what's going on outside. So, uh, 13 points. Same as uh, C and Yetis. I'm not sure if Evest is good. It might be, but I think at this stage I'm going to uh, guarantee the win. Let's just check that that does do it. 13 points would take me to 410. Yeah, that will be enough. Great, that's the end of the game. A really tight game. The final score, 406 to my opponent, 416 to me. Uh, win by just 10 points. Let's see what I missed. Okay, my opponent went first, and I had this awful rack. And, well... I played Vidious for 22, I could have played Vor for 16, 6 fewer points, retained the S, but retaining the U as well. Probably not much between those plays. But I was certainly fortunate, I think, given that I was drawing 6 random tiles from the bag to have a bingo, but I did. And Geladas and Salvaged were the available bingos, but the K3 play of Geladas scored the most and was best. Now this is where I disgraced myself with uh, Anupia. I think it is Anupia's... Sorry, Anupsia, which I was confusing it with. There's certainly something uh, similar to uh, the phony I played. And, well, I think Poinado was the best play, but I didn't spot it. Fortunately, it remained available, and I did spot it. And... Here is where I played out Ran. I could have played Orant in the same row, but for the same number of points, but that would have retained the U, so out Ran was better. And Milka was good. I'm not too sure why I had doubts about that, but I did. Um, however, it was good, and it was the best play. Nice um, word by my opponent, ostrich. Common word, but not easy to see. And it's always difficult to see words when you've got uh, two blanks. Because it's very hard to consider um, each possible combination of um, letters that the blanks could be. And this is where I had um, Cotia, which was best. And Flanch would have been better than Flench. I was unsure of Flanch. I was sure of Flench, but an EO. Well, having said that EO is better than AO, look at the remaining vowels. There were five E's left and two A's, so it's probably not as clear-cut. Now, this was a really tricky rack. I played AB in the end for 26. I think one would need to analyse this game to find out what was really best. Analyse this move, rather, to find out what was really best. But I think AB... Um, was probably good enough. And look at my opponent, he did not have a great rack. He was suffering a vowel shortage, which worked to my advantage. Now this is where I played Sofa. And I could have played Fossey at C5 for three more points. I think actually it's worth a three point sacrifice because I suspect the S gives me um, a lot of flexibility. Well, it does because uh, the rack, um, the bag is empty at this point. So if I played off Fossey, I would simply have the E to play. Whereas I think with C, I can score more than three more points than I could with just the E. So I'm happy with Sofa. Let's just see if my opponent had anything amazing here. 
no badged looks best and that's what he played so well done to my opponent and finally uh, C at A1 was best okay I'm surprised I didn't spend particularly long exhausting the possibilities on the board fortunately uh, the best play was um, right in the top left hand corner which is where you start looking so that was the end of that game um, apart from blotting my copybook with uh, a phony I think the other moves were quite um, challenging and interesting uh, the doubts that I have with Milka and Cotia just happen all the time with Scrabble. You're juggling such a massive vocabulary that there's actually quite a large number of words which are in this grey area where you have a small amount of doubt uh, about them. And um, that never gets resolved. That is, that is always there and that is part and parcel of the game for, uh, I would say, the vast majority of players. You just need to... Um, tune your antennae to try and get a feel for when the doubt you have about a word is um, sufficiently great that you shouldn't play it because if you simply didn't play words where you had any doubt at all you'd be playing too far within yourself and you'd lose more games than you need to so uh, i hope that um, video was of interest and value uh, my name is david webb and this has been a video for dweebovision